Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing just great. So I figured I'd throw a video up on YouTube uh, since I'm probably going to be busy tomorrow and on the 4th I'm not going to be here. Go celebrate the 4th with some friends, have a barbecue, and hopefully if it doesn't pour outside, uh, you might see some fireworks. So I decided to pull out this Squire base, and this is the Jaguar base. Now, I wanted to figure out what was wrong with it and why I got it so cheap because there was something wrong with it. And from what I was told, there was no output and it made noise. Well, since this is a, well, since this is basically a bunch of single coils on this base and uh, I'm not Terry 3G's, uh, I won't be sending this back because it's making noise. I already know why. So trying to figure out what the problem was and I found it, corrected it, uh, figured I'd make a video about what I found and how I corrected it. All right, so first thing I did, pluck the old battery that was inside here. I don't know how old this thing is. I don't know if it's any good or what. I'm not putting my tongue on it to find out. If you guys want to do it, I'll send it to you. Put a new battery on here, new Duracell, and was still not getting any power. Now, come to find out, checking this area over here wasn't the issue. It was this area here. So, first thing I did was put a new battery in it, check to see if there was anything disconnected over here at the output jack, or even if the output jack was any good. Uh, plucked out the controls and checked to see if maybe one of the wires was misplaced on the board over here it is marked of what they are supposed to be and where they're going basically so you have the white one is a in and that's coming from your tone control so it's going into here and then going out is going over to your uh, output jack not to any place else so we got the pickups here and then we got two grounds for the pickups we have a ground that is going to the shielding paint that's on the inside of the cavity over here and you know you got your jumper wire going to your tone orange cap so this right here is supposed to be a CT booster okay now probably more of an equalizer all right than anything else and I like these things they work out pretty good they're not too bad but they can be iffy especially if you're using uh, wireless if you're using like a, uh, let's see here, where is it? Like I use my NUX wireless system and sometimes it doesn't work correctly with them. So this is one of those where it didn't work correctly with it. I have an Ibanez base that does the same thing. But that's not what the problem with this. If I plug it in directly, wired, I get noise, I get sound, I hear bass. But not all the time. So coming to find out here, if you jiggle the battery around, all right, which also moves the wires, which are also on this little plate here, uh, this circuit, and ended up uh, cutting in and out. So let me bring you closer and show you what I did to correct this. All right, so you see a diode on this board over here, okay? This diode is basically to ensure that voltage goes in one direction and one direction only, okay? But it's not going to work properly if it's not connected properly. So what I ended up doing here is the traces that are going for each solder joint from each side of the diode were loose. And I mean like loose to where they weren't even connected onto the board anymore. So what I ended up doing is I put a jumper wire from point A to point B and then from point A to point B out to the guitar bot uh, controls. And that's basically all I did. And now she is working. She is making noise now. Simple fix. One of the things that I don't understand is a lot of uh, guitar stores, if they have something that is... Uh, like a return or something that is a manufacturer flaw broken or you know not wired correctly or something you know they don't have anybody in house that could do this and that's more of a question than anything else and I know every music store that I have been to especially the one that is by me uh, they got three tacks over there 
all in-house. They don't all work on the same time or the same day, but he's got three techs over there. And they're, they're basically part-timers. And, you know, if something came in like this, they test all their guitars first. Okay, that's not a big deal. Possibly do setups on them or whatever and hang them on the shelf. They work, they work, they great. That's great. But if something is wrong with them, they have an opportunity to send it back and get whatever uh, credit to, to their account for that item or uh, crack it open and see what's wrong with it. You know, with this here, um, this is stupid. I mean, this is really dumb. It doesn't look like anybody's been in here. Uh, all of the, even on the back cover over here, the uh, plastic, you know, is still on or around the top of the screws. So nobody's twisted the plastic off of when they turned the screw on. Uh, the cover plate for this thing here was the same way. A lot of these screws still had, I ended up twisting the plastic on these screws myself. You know, just some plastic on that one. And yes, there is plastic on here. I need to remove that. So it's like to save money, to make a sale, to be able to put something up on the shelf, why can't they fix this shit themselves? It's stupid, really. This is a real dumb fix. So the sound that was coming from this thing, all right, was basically no sound at all. Or if I ended up doing something back here with the battery, then you get partial sound or some sound and then it cut out, cut itself out again. So why can't that be fixed by an in-house tech? Why sell it really cheap? And I mean really, really cheap. And put it back out there for somebody else to fix. I mean, hell, I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. Because your fuck up is going to be a profit to me. Because this will be going back up online to be sold. I am going to do a paint job on this thing though. I don't like this this burst. I, I never have. I, I Sunbursts are, are not my thing. So what I'm going to end up doing with this thing is painting a solid color, not doing a matching headstock. I could probably get the logo for the headstock, even though I, I probably, maybe I should do a matching headstock. Hmm. So if I plug this in, and let's see, I'm not confused or anything, but I don't want to flip this thing over and scratch the piss out of it. All right, so she slipped over. I have what's called Element Base, which is one of Glenn Fricker's, uh, I think, I hope I said his name right, one of his programs that he uses are made for doing bass. I have to say, I like it a lot. It, it's got some really cool features to it and sounds great. So right now, got my patch cord and get the knot out of it. It's connected to my audio interface. Plugged it in. Now, without a gate, this thing is noisy as fuck. Again, you know, Terry 3G's, single coils. Just because it's, it's noisy and shit uh, doesn't mean it's broken. So I want to check to see, because I am hearing a lot of noise when I touch the strings and stuff, so I'm wondering if this ground here is a good solid ground. I want to check that out. I also want to check out the wires to make sure that everything is connected solid and there's no cold or cracked solder joints in this. So I'm going to go ahead and these, I don't have a set of speakers, so headphones it is. I got sound. And everything Although it does sound like it's dirty. So you can hear, was it this one? Yeah. You know, these two animals kind of act like a humbucker, but they're not perfectly aligned side by side. But this one here, this one here is noisy as fuck. So that works. If I turn this down, 
Turn this up. That works. Everything's working the way it's supposed to. All right, so I'm going to put this thing back together, button everything up, and put this off to the side. Decide what uh, paint scheme I'm going to go with this. If I'm going to go with a custom paint job, I know I'm going to go with a custom color. But as far as a design or something on here, I don't know yet what I'm going to do. Now, I am going to, however, fill all these holes. And when I say fill these holes, I mean there's going to be no more pick guard that is going to cover most of this body. I hate pick guards. I mean, pick guards to me just, just kill the beauty of the body of a guitar, the shape of the guitar, uh, in some cases the finish of the guitar or what's underneath the finish as far as a flame maple or quilted smell, whatever. And even with this, even though this is a transparent color, you can see the lines through it and stuff, you're killing it by putting this thing on here. That's just killing a lot of the view of what this guitar looks like. Now, what I'm thinking of doing is I can go two ways with this. I can either go with a piece of metal polished and sprayed to look like chrome to match this cat cover right here. Um, and, or I can go with the plastic. But either way, the way this is cut here is the way this is going to be cut, cut here. And this area would just be covering up this area here along with the controls. I could probably even get away when I like, there's enough material on here. I could probably get away with making a black control cover over here instead of having the chrome one. But I do like the chrome one. You know, it's kind of kind of nice, nice touch, and it kind of matches with a few things on here with the chrome itself. But getting rid of all these screw holes and making this a solid top instead of having a pick guard. Now, another thing that's going to happen with this too is that I'm not going to do it right away. I'll do it when I disassemble everything and uh, put everything back together after it's painted. But you see these wires here and you see how long they are. You see that, you know, I could stretch these things out you know, quite a bit. Even though I'm limited right now by let's see here the wire that is going the ground wire that's going to the output jack or nope the output jacks over here nope I'm limited to the wire that's going to the bridge itself um, that wire there if it was any longer I could stretch these wires out all the way to the wall over here that is acting as an antenna believe it or not you are going to be picking up with this wire you are going to be picking up extra noise and when I get done with this thing, and you know, hopefully my theory is correct, because uh, I've heard other people say it too, that having your wires like this um, is really not a good idea. Although it is a good idea if you're going to be swapping pickups, you know, leaving your wires a little bit long for your pickups. But the rest of it is just acting as you know a big antenna, and coiling up wire is not a good idea. So if you're taking wire and you're just coiling it up, something like this. Now I do this for just storage, but take wire and coil it up like this. This is actually now a resistor, okay? If you take wire and you bundle it up like this, squeezing it in the middle, this is still acting as a resistor, just not as bad as the other one was. And wire length also adds resistance. And this is something that I've learned with car audio and stuff. Never go beyond a certain point as far as from point A to point B, especially with electrical. It uh, doesn't matter if you're using copper clad aluminum or if you're using 100% copper, oxygen free copper uh, power cables. The longer it is, if you don't need that extra length, cut it off because that actually is adding resistance. And the more cuts you have in a wire, just like this right here, the more cuts you have in a wire also acts as a resistant because wherever it's cut and soldered, cut and soldered, that's actually slowing down from point A to point B at the end of the chain. So yeah, coiling this up, uh, not a good idea. I wouldn't do it. Maybe just the pickup wires, I will kind of like tuck in a little bit, but I am going to trim them down a little bit more. And the rest of this shit, we'll see how it works out. If it cuts back on some of the noise that this thing was picking up. 
All right, you guys, you have a great weekend. Or actually, no, week, week holiday, not weekend holiday. Weekend's already over with. So you guys have a good one. Be safe out there. Enjoy each other. Enjoy the fireworks. Enjoy whatever you guys are doing for barbecuing and shit. I know I'm going to have some fun. Hopefully the rain doesn't slow anything down. And uh, you guys take it easy. Have a good one.